Good evening, people. I am Craig, and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know already, this channel is going to be about investing, most often investing in cryptocurrencies. We're going to be talking about yield, farming, staking, everything you can to make your wealth grow even faster than the already hyper-fast cryptocurrencies. This episode is going to be talking about Cardano, and I'm going to kind of bring in a kind of a backstory of how Bitcoin kind of showcases how bullish we should be about all cryptocurrencies, including Cardano, which is tonight's topic. But a little housekeeping first. First, I want to thank uh, everyone. I'm up to 460 subscribers on my way to my goal of 1,000. Thank you very much. Another kind of thing I want to ask you is, do you like this kind of background as opposed to, I was doing a green background where, in essence, I'm cut out from a green background onto the screen. Um, I kind of like this because, let me just show you, when I'm here, you can sort of see a background. And another reason is, I've got a beautiful lens that has great bokeh. So if I show you anything, you can see it. When I have my green background, you can't tell I have that beautiful bokeh background because you see nothing behind me, it's, I'm cut out. So just something I'm trying here, I'm going back to my original shot of just the inside of my office. Let me know if you prefer this or the green, the green screen background. So I'm leaning towards this way. It's a lot easier for me as well. I don't have to set up the green screen. B, if I have to showcase anything on camera, it does a much better job of showcasing things and blurring out the background, which is kind of cool. So anyways, let's get on to today's topic, Cardano. Now Cardano, for a lot of people, including myself who have uh, owns Cardano for a little while, has been kind of, you'd call stuck in the doldrums, like it's just sort of been going sideways where a lot of other cryptocurrencies, such as Ethereum, uh, even Binance coin, a lot of other coins have been going steadily up, while Cardano for the last few couple months at least has just been going sideways. Um, I think that's about to change, and I think there's some very bullish signs coming and some very bullish news on the horizon that's going to make uh, Cardano rocket up. And this is the perfect time to get in if you haven't already. And for those that have been patient, a great time to continue to be patient for just a little bit longer. So let's go into the charts. Now, I know this episode is going to be about Cardano and that's what the thumbnail says, but you always have to look at Bitcoin first because think of Bitcoin as the tide that lifts all boats and vice versa, the ebbing tide that lowers all boats when the tide goes out. Because a bullish Bitcoin time frame is usually bullish for all the coins. Usually Bitcoin hits its peak and then starts to roll over and the altcoins roll over just a little bit after it, maybe a month or two after it. Um, so you can use Bitcoin as kind of like your canary in the coal mine. Where Bitcoin is healthy, then all the coins are healthy and they're all going to go up. Bitcoin starts to little sick, look a little sick, then start thinking about taking some profits in those more speculative altcoins. So let's look at Bitcoin to see where we are in its bull cycle to kind of judge where that means we should be thinking of Cardano, BNB, or any of the other altcoins. So in case you aren't aware of it, every four years there's a thing called a halving. So there was one in 2012, one in 2016, one in 2020. There's been this constant repetition. Now they'll say history doesn't repeat, but it certainly does rhyme, meaning that the, the charts won't look exactly the same every four year cycle, but they look very similar. Uh, this is just going to show you that in 2013, although this Bitfinex um, Bitcoin chart doesn't go previous to it, I've already seen other ones, so I've, I've put these uh, boxes in to show you this, that the 2013 bull market went 36 weeks from the previous, it breaking the previous all time high to its bull market end of all time high. And then it went down for about uh, 94 bars or 94 weeks to the all time well lower here. Uh, same thing happened in 2017 when it broke its all time high from the previous, well, broke the previous all time high. It took 34 bars or so 34 weeks to get to the all time high in 2017. And in doing so, it went about 1600%. Then it falls off and it fell down to this low about 87 bars after the original time it broke its all time high. And this is what we're forecasting to happen again. It happened 2013 high, happened in 2017 high. We're anticipating it happens in the 2021 high. So we had the halving in 2020. And then right after that, like it always has done before, the halving happens and then that makes all the coins worth more. And just a quick in case you aren't aware of what having is, 
Every four years, Bitcoin's formula is that it cuts the reward to the miners in half. Uh, so they have to work just as hard to get half as many coins rewarded to them. Therefore, the coins are more valuable. It's that scarcity factor. And there's only a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins ever. So they're scarcer and scarcer, harder and harder to create new coins. Therefore, the value of the coin goes up. And therefore, this kind of forces this raging bull market that happens right after the halving. We are about here. We broke the new high back here, and we're about halfway up this 35, if it goes longer, 35 a week, 36 week time cycle, which will get us to the end of August, early September. So if this bull market is only 35, 36 weeks, it should end at the end of August. A lot of people are saying this bull market is different. And that's the, you hate to say that this time's different because how many people have lost money thinking that this time's different? But we're certainly bullish for a while yet, but some people think there's a super cycle coming because of the adoption of all these corporations putting it on their balance sheet as cash. Instead of putting cash on their balance sheet, they have extra cash, they're going and buying some Bitcoin. We know Tesla's doing it, we know MicroStrategy is doing it in a big way. I think PayPal is doing it, Square, a bunch of other companies have already done it. And I think um, some of the big banks, the Goldman Sachs, the you know, all these other companies are starting to hint at getting their big net worth clients into having a certain percentage of Bitcoin on their balance sheets as well. So because of that, we're not gonna have the, well, let's face it, in 2013, it was a very fringe coin. There was a lot of worry it might not last, the government might outlaw it, blah, blah, blah. 2017, it was getting more mass adoption, a little bit more mass adoption in people, but not corporations. And now we have, it's in the news all the time, it's on CNBC all the time, everybody's always talking Bitcoin, corporations putting it on their balance sheet, so maybe this bull market goes longer than 35, 36 weeks. Maybe it goes higher than it has in the past. Maybe it won't go more than 1,600% from the previous all-time high to the new high. Who knows? But I'm kind of saying, let's just assume it's the same as 2017. So I drew these boxes in. So let's assume we're bullish until the end of August, early September. It may go longer. And again, we can use Bitcoin as that canary in the coal mine. If Bitcoin just keeps going up, then you're probably confident that your BNB coin, your Ethereum coin, your Cardano coin, your Polkadot coin are gonna to continue to be in a bullish pattern. So that's the tide that lifts all boats principle. If Bitcoin is in a bullish phase, then almost all the other coins are gonna go up as well. So with that in mind, let's jump over to the Cardano. So Cardano, think of this, we're already in a bullish phase because of Bitcoin, but we have yet another reason to be bullish for Cardano. So Cardano doesn't have the having thing to make it bullish, it has the forks. So there was the Shelly fork, which allowed for staking, and that allowed this huge run up. Now, Cardano is a little different in that, you know, with Bitcoin, we're talking about the having happens and then the bull market happens. With Cardano, it's the announced fork that's going to improve Cardano. Um, the whole plan by Charles is, Charles was one of the original founders of Ethereum, and he left that smart chain because he thought he could do a better smart chain. There was just not enough progress happening in Ethereum. He felt that it was limited and he thought he could create a better, smarter, more efficient, less cost, less gas fees type of uh, smart chain system. And that's why he started Cardano. So there was the Shelly fork that was spoken about and talked about it was going to happen and everything got bullish because it was coming. And that allowed for staking. But then once that happened, it was like, oh, all the hoopla kind of went away and there was a bit of a pullback, uh, you know, which also could go along with pullbacks in Bitcoin or whatever else. But then there was the Mary Fork, which is multi-asset ledger uh, capabilities of Cardano. And as you can see, there's a bullish run up to that. And now what do we have coming up in August? They're saying August, there's going to be the Alonzo Fork, which is finally going to allow the smart contracts on Cardano, which is going to make it a true competitor to Ethereum. And there's already lots of news stories about companies already coming over to Cardano now, even before the Alonzo fork happens in uh, supposedly August. So that is should be bullish just like the previous one. So I've drawn in this box here. And as you can see, the previous box, we kind of went from the, the low before the bull market started. So for all I know, this, this could be here. This last little dip we just got out of, oh, now we're in this bullish phase. Uh, we're almost breaking to new highs. Maybe that's the start of this blue box. Who knows? But I put it over here just for now because it maybe we can't count on this not doing one more dip down before it goes up. 
Either way, there should be a very bullish cycle between now and the Alonzo fork at the end of August, let's say. Now, isn't the end of August exactly the same time frame for the bullishness in Bitcoin? So you've got bullish Bitcoin and bullish Cardano reasons in unison, working together towards the pushing Cardano up. So if you're like me and you own Cardano already and you've been a little like, oh, it's not going anywhere, it's just kind of going sideways, um, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. That's what this is all about. And uh, yeah. Thank goodness you've been patient. If you're still in it, congratulations. I think we have a very bullish phase. And as you can see here, these are all the uh, Fibonacci extensions here. And there's one uh, here and there's one at, so there's one just below $6 at $5.45 and there's one around $6.35. So I rounded it off as you can see from my, uh, from my thumbnail here. I just said six, because who wants to say heading to $6.33? I mean, it just doesn't roll off the tongue, right? But I think we're we're heading up to this area here, somewhere in the 550 to 650 uh, range by the time the Alonzo fork is implemented. And maybe at that point, that will actually be unlike these other forks where things sort of just go sideways or go down. Maybe because this is finally the Ethereum beater theoretically, that so many corporations or companies will be coming over to Cardano. So we've got some stories here. Um, this Occam partners and with Bondly provide next generation NFT capabilities to Cardano. This is new stories that are already out, talking about the NFT craze and how they're, they're all gonna start using the Cardano. Why would they be using Cardano as opposed to uh, Ethereum? The same reason the Binance Smart Chain is taking off as well. Ethereum is broken. I don't understand how Ethereum keeps going up because anybody who has traded using the Ethereum blockchain and getting $50 gas fees, $40 gas fees must just be pulling their hair out when you can do it on Binance Smart Chain for like 22 cents or less sometimes um, for the same transactions. And I mean, if you use both systems and you use Binance and get charged 20 cents and you use Ethereum and get charged $50, how could you continually use the Ethereum blockchain? It just doesn't make any sense to me. But Cardano is now coming on the picture, and I think that if they get this fork implemented, and it's sweet, and it works perfectly, and the gas fees are even lower than Binance or lower than Solana, then maybe there's another leg up, up to this bull to go even higher, maybe up to like $10, who knows? I'm just saying for the next few months, we're in May now, from May to August, we're going to be in a super bullish phase, combination of bull market with Bitcoin and bull market reasoning for Cardano. So hopefully huh, we have some brighter days ahead for Cardano holders. Hopefully you found that informative or educational. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that we can get me to that 1000 level. Yay, 1000. And in case you're unsure why I keep mentioning 1000, um, if you don't have a YouTube channel, you don't know this, they will not monetize your channel unless you have a thousand subscribers. The thought process is that if you don't have a thousand subscribers, we can't trust you. You might say something really politically incorrect and advertisers will be up in arms that we put their ad on your video. So until you get to a thousand subscribers, you're not trusted, therefore they don't put ads. And if they don't put ads on your video, your videos might well not exist at all in YouTube's mind. They do not promote you. Do they not put you on the recommended videos? None of that happens until you get to above 1,000 subscribers. So help a brother out here, get me to 1,000. I appreciate it. I love doing this content on uh, all sorts of cryptocurrencies. I just am in love with this area. I'm just having a great time uh, learning myself, researching things, reading articles all day, every time I have time off from my regular job. That's what I'm doing. And then I just feel, well, if I'm learning for myself, I might as well make episodes like this so I can share it with people like you and hopefully you get some value out of it. So that's it. I guess I have nothing further to say. Thank you for watching. Put anything you've got in questions in the comments. Also on the bottom of the screen, you'll see my Twitter and my uh, my email. Twitter I just started, so I don't really have a lot of followers. I, I'm gonna start posting more about uh, different crypto things that I cross my mind in the middle of the day instead of waiting to do a video. So I'll start uh, putting more on there. I also release my video uh, links with my thumbnail on my Twitter, just in case you do follow me on Twitter, you'll see it there if you don't already hit that notification button on YouTube. So until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you happiness, health, and wealth in that order. Ciao for now.